Welcome to the third Sunday in Advent. Today we're asking the question, are, are you, you ready, ready for, for some, some joy and light? light? Well, hello everyone and welcome to Kamsa Connect, your weekly worship service from Cambridge Citadel Salvation Army here in the UK. Of Advent and today we're going back 2000 years and thinking about the shock and surprise some of the people of the Jewish nation had when they discovered that Jesus the Messiah had been born and was already here. On this third Sunday in Advent, we're celebrating the word joy too, so we hope you are ready to feel joyful this Sunday. And our theme this week is the hopes and fears of all the years, and we're in John chapter 1, so have your Bibles ready for that. As you can see, we've adorned ourselves with tasteful seasonal knitwear as it's Christmas Jumper Sunday at Cambridge Citadel, and all of us are wearing these in our in-person worship too. Well, I hope they all are, else we'll be the only ones, won't we? <laughs> Coming up in today's episode of Kamsa Connect, we've got some Christmas confusion with the skit guys, Christmas music from our young people's band, and... Christmas pudding? No. Christmas carols? No. Christmas camels? It's a new Christmas song written by two members of our congregation. Honestly, Martin, Christmas camels. Well, I thought Christmas camels would be great. Anyway, we want to thank all of you who participated in our Carols with Kamsa survey and all of you who have sent Christmas greetings to our big card. You'll be able to sing along with the top 10 carols as nominated by you, our lovely viewers, and see all of your Christmas messages to each other in next week's Carols with Kamsa. Now, thank goodness we can stop talking about that now. <laughs> well... We look forward to overdosing on Christmas carols next week. But for now, we still are firmly in the season of Advent. So let's join in a song which calls us to worship our three-in-one God. Glory be to God the Father.
thanks for that good sing. So we're thinking about the word joy today and we're remembering the joy that entered the world when Jesus was born 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. At times our world can be a joyless, dark place, but we read in the Bible that Jesus came as a light into darkness. Today's Gospel writer John puts it like this, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And in some translations, it even says, have not understood it. That's right. What we're going to remember today is that when Jesus arrived in Bethlehem, the world didn't understand that he had come. They were looking for joy and light, but they were looking for it in someone else, a great leader or a king in a grand city, not a baby born to an ordinary family in a small town. Well, in a few moments, we'll celebrate Jesus coming as a light into darkness as we sing a song that says, I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. But first, let's share in a short prayer together and here to lead us today is one of our young people, Emily. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for the joy that entered the world when Jesus was born. Thank you for becoming God with us. Lord, sometimes it's difficult to live joyfully, especially in difficult or busy seasons. Please purify our hearts this week and remind us that you are in control. Help us to consider it joy when we experience trials of any kind because we know you are creating something beautiful and eternal. As we fix our eyes and hearts on you, fill our souls with renewed strength courage and hope. Lord, you are always worthy of being praised and we want to worship you. Amen. Well, thanks for joining in that song. Such a beautiful tune, Kingsfold, which is an English folk melody that Vaughan Williams apparently first heard when he was in the village of Kingsfold, which is near Horsham, which is where all my family live. Hello, family. So are we having any songs from my part of the world then today? Um... No. Anyway, let's move on past the uh, Irish dancing, shall we? What? Nothing. Anyway, coming up in the next segment, we're going to have some fun with the Skip Guys, our weekly update from Norman, and listen to our fabulous young people's band who are playing music on what must have been a very cold and windy day. 
And coming up, we're going to introduce to you a new song written by two of our congregation members. We'll tell you who wrote the words a bit later, but right now we can reveal that the man behind the music of the song is our very own Peter. And right now he's going to bring today's Bible reading to us. Thanks, Peter. Today's reading is from John chapter 1, verses 19 to 28. And this is the testimony of John, where the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent by the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptising, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptise you with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptising. May God add his blessing to this reading. Hey neighbor, you need a hand? I'm, I'm good, thanks. Don't worry, I'm coming. Stand his little helper's on his way. Hey, ha <laughs> ha. So you got the star that'll guide Chris Kringle to your chimney. Good move, my man. Oh, uh, no, it's the uh, star, star of Bethlehem. Right, yeah, Bethlehem, North Pole. Same thing, right? No. Oh. Nope, uh, no, uh, no, no, uh, sorry. It's the uh, the star that you know the Magi. Right, Magi. What is the Magi? I found something on the web about emojis. Check it uh, out. Uh, the Magi, the, uh, the the wise men who came to see the Messiah, the the, the Christ, the uh, Son of God. Then he would grow up to become Santa. No, no, no. He's gonna grow up and he's gonna pay for the sins of the world. Guess that'd be a pretty hefty price tag, huh? Hmm. Yeah. That's why it's called Christmas. Christ Christmas. Well, I wish you would've told me all this before I spent my Christmas bonus and all that junk over there. Thanks a lot. Merry Christmas. No, hey, I... <laughs> you look like my Santa! <laughs> now, despite the comedy element, that was a very important message, wasn't it? We do hope that you enjoyed watching it. Now, you may have noticed in the Skit Guy sketch that one house had rather a lot of lights or similar. Not sure when they're going to be switched on, but today I am switching on my own Christmas lights. My Christmas jumper is all prepared and ready, and I do hope that you're wearing your Christmas jumpers today too. So here goes. Ta da! 
Our Be A Star initiative has been very successful and thanks to all of you who have supported this. I will announce the final numbers of food and toy parcels provided next week but our current estimate is that around 200 food parcels and toys for 400 children have been prepared. These are to be distributed by relevant authorities during this coming week. Last week, the third guest for our online charity concert, It's Virtually Christmas, was revealed. So our final guest, Howard Evans, will be joining Lucy Bunce, Aubrey Logan and Elliot Chapel, who were announced previously. A reminder that during that presentation, there will be a QR code available for you to scan and make a donation to our chosen charity this year, which is East Anglian Children's Hospices. We do hope that you will watch and support once again. Our building project is making headway and good progress is now evident internally. We now anticipate the actual construction works being completed during February 2022. But then we have to put back all of our stored items of equipment and furniture and then prepare our new facilities to accommodate our future daily and weekly programmes. A quick recap that episodes of Kids Time and Prayer Matters will conclude at the end of 2021. But until then, each week on this same video channel, episodes of Prayer Matters are posted every Wednesday. Kids Time is every Sunday at 9am followed by Kamsa Connect at 10am. Next Sunday, it's Carols with Kamsa, featuring the 10 favourite carols you selected from our recent survey. Looking ahead, we will present our final episode of Prayer Matters on Christmas Eve, and there will be a shorter episode of Kamsa Connect for you to enjoy on Christmas Day. Finally, as you are all aware, new rules have been introduced due to the ever-increasing transmission of the Omicron variant of COVID-19. As ever, we would encourage you to follow the guidelines as published by the Health Authority for your region of the UK or wherever you may be watching in the world. Thanks for watching and for listening. We are now going to listen as our Young People's Band bring to us a piece of music with the title Winter's Rock. Take it away guys and girls. Thank you.
Well, thanks to Lee and the Young People's Band for that brilliant music. It's really enjoyable and we hope you all get warmed up soon. <laughs> Now, today we've got some great news to share with you about the DVDs and CDs we send out of Kamza Connect and all our other online video programmes to viewers without access to internet. Our volunteer Ben has been sending these out since episode one all the way back in March last year and this week Ben posted the 1000th disc. Du, 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 du. Well, yes, and at great expense, we have purchased an award and earlier this week we delivered it to him. Here he is with a few words of thanks. Oh, uh, thank, thank you. Um, I, I'd like to thank my, uh, my mum, my cousin's aunt, the printer and uh, my DVD burner for this uh, award if you can call it that uh, yeah thank you wow was that the actual trophy we gave him I know, but the budget was a bit tight. I think it must have been. Well, he does always say he's spinning plates. Anyhow, that was a bit of fun there, but on a more serious note, thank you, Ben, for working so hard in sending out all those discs over the past 22 months. It's a really important ministry for Cambridge Citadel, and we're really grateful for your help. Thank you. Absolutely, and a proper gift will be coming your way soon. All right then, it's almost time for the new song we've been talking about. Peter wrote the music and we can reveal that the writer of the words is none other than our very own Norman. Hey. So we'll be hearing from Norman in a moment as he introduces the song to us. First though, please get your smartphone camera running as it's your opportunity to give in our online offering. Thanks in advance for your giving. I'm not by any means a composer of music, but like most people, tunes or melodies pop into my head, some of which I've never ever heard before. This is one of those. A few years ago, I was carrying out overnight surveying in a clinic block at Addenbrooke's Hospital. As I walked down the deserted corridor at 3 a.m., a melody formed in my mind to the rhythm of my echoing footsteps. It didn't go away. So I stopped for a few minutes and wrote it down. When having a break, the words, Jesus is here, kept coming into my head. And so the third verse was the first to be written while I was having a tea break. After finishing the other two verses, our singing company sang it out one Sunday at Christmas time with help from Phil and Gavin, who did some arranging for me. My footstep in tempo was a bit too fast, so it was slowed down. Recently, I noticed that another of our core members, Peter Webber, has been putting a lot of his own compositions and arrangements on YouTube. So I asked him if he would rearrange this for me, which he kindly agreed to do. It is called God's Gift at Christmas, and you are now about to join in singing this new arrangement. We do hope that you enjoy it. Tinsel and holly and lights that are dancing Gifts by a tree and a family near Music and carols and snow falling gently Goodwill to all men we sing loud and clear Christmas is here, Christmas is here Let us rejoice spreading 
Well, thank you for that song, Norman and Peter. So on this third Sunday in Advent, we're reminded, as we were last week, that John the Baptist came as God's messenger and said, get ready, he's coming. But who was coming? The Jewish people had been waiting for centuries for God's chosen one, the Messiah, to unite their people and restore their fortunes. The Messiah would right every wrong and would bring in an age of peace and prosperity. No one knew who the Messiah would be or when he would come. But whoever he might be, the hopes of an entire nation were pinned on him. In the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, we sing that the hopes and fears of all the years were met in Bethlehem on the night of Jesus' birth. And when we look at all the high hopes and the great expectations the people of his day had about the Messiah coming, we can understand why they got so excited when someone came along who they thought might be him. They wondered about this man called John who appeared in the desert and he was wearing rough camel skins and he was telling people to repent of their sins and he baptised them in the River Jordan. Crowds followed him and he spoke about God with great authority. Could he be the Messiah, they wondered? Well, in our passage from John chapter 1 today, the religious leaders in Jerusalem sent their priests to find out. So this is what we read in John chapter 1 at verse 21. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? Well, John does come across as a bit of an awkward customer, doesn't he? He seems to enjoy making the priests play a game of 20 questions with him to guess who he is. But at the end of their conversation, he gives them some important news about the Messiah, which will fuel their sense of expectation. Here are three quick things John said about the one who would come after him. He said, number one, he is already here. Secondly, the priests don't know him. And thirdly, he is far greater than John is. This would have been a bit of a bombshell for all these priests who had travelled out into the desert from Jerusalem. They might have expected that when the long-awaited Messiah finally turned up, they would be the first to know about it. Imagine what it would have been like for one of those priests personally who his whole life had been in training and of reading the scriptures of the prophets and being the latest in a long line of religious leaders in Jerusalem who were the ones watching and waiting for the Messiah, aware of all the weight of the hopes and fears of the nation that rested on their shoulders, to be told that he's already here. What? And they would have also expected him to be a religious leader in the city too, like them or one of the Pharisees who had sent them to question John. They must have been thinking, well, who is it then? And to be told that this unknown Messiah was already far, far more important than John, well, they must have dreaded returning to the temple in Jerusalem with such news. So who was this unknown, important person that had been right there under their noses? 
And there were the crowds there on that day around John who were listening to the conversation, the ordinary working class men, women and children of Jerusalem and the surrounding areas who also knew acutely about hope and fear, but for different reasons. They worked hard, but were an impressed people living under a fragile Roman Jewish coalition where the Romans were in charge, but appointed local religious leaders to keep the crowds quiet. This meant for the most part, they had better do as they were told. I wonder how they might have felt about the news that this Messiah for whom they had waited so long had finally arrived. The pious and the elite, as well as the poor and ordinary, had waited centuries for the arrival of the Messiah. So as we wait expectantly for Christmas, we remember all those who had pinned their hopes and fears on Jesus, the Messiah. We now know about God's Son and soon will celebrate his birth but we can continue to bring our hopes and fears to him in prayer. Many of us know all too well about fear. For almost 22 months, the world has lived with a sense of global fear with this awful pandemic, which we're all so sick and tired of by now. And there are some of you who are watching today who are genuinely in fear because of the health of a loved one or because of a letter you're expecting through the door with bad news or because once your direct debits have come out, you know there won't be much left for all that has to be bought at Christmas. But I imagine we all know about hope too, hope for a better new year, hope for circumstances to improve for someone we care about or hope for a pay rise or hope for successfully passing exams to secure a place at college or at work. As we think about all that life is throwing at us at this time, we remind ourselves that just as all the hopes and fears of the entire Jewish nation were met in Jesus, so our hopes and fears can be met in him too. For the songwriter reminds us that Jesus, the everlasting light, shines into the dark streets of our world and into our lives. And that how silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given. God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. So let's make sure that with joy this Advent season, we see that Jesus has come, that we understand that he has come, and may you receive from him the blessings of heaven this Advent season.
Father God, thank you for the reminder today that your son Jesus has come to bring joy and light into our world. Thank you that we can bring to you our hopes and fears, whatever they may be. We pray that our eyes will be open to realize that Jesus, our Emmanuel, is here and by his spirit lives in the world today. Almighty God, you know the detail of all our hopes and fears this Christmas time. As we live our lives here on earth, may we pin our hopes on you and put our trust in you only. And may we understand that Jesus is here. In the name of Jesus, our long-awaited Saviour, we pray. Amen. And Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us this week, everyone. We'll be back next Sunday with Carols with Kamza, where we'll be revealing your top 10 carols and sharing your Christmas greetings to one another. And next week will not quite be the final episode of the year because we have a special Kamza Connect surprise coming on Christmas Day. So do look out for that. Yes. And don't forget that also next Sunday will be the premiere of our amazing online charity concert, It's Virtually Christmas, with stellar guests, Aubrey Logan, Elliot Chapel, Lucy Bunce and Howard Evans. Yeah, so do keep an eye on our Facebook page for information about that and for other musical treats and bits of news too. And remember to give this video a like and if you want to stay up to date with all our YouTube content, click subscribe and the bell icon. We'd love to have you as part of the Kamza online community. Great stuff. Well, before we go, we'll join in a final song together, one of the best known and much loved Advent hymns, which looks forward to the return of Jesus and the ushering in of God's kingdom once and for all. So in the meantime, everyone, keep safe, keep well. And keep connected. God, God bless, bless you. you.